What's going on everybody and welcome to another Unreal Engine development build video. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen these videos on my channel before, basically what we do is we go and grab the latest version of Unreal Engine from Epic Games GitHub repository and we take a peek behind the curtain to see what new audio features could be headed our way. Now, before we get started, there's a couple things that I do want to mention. Uh, first and foremost, being a development build means this is still very much a work in progress. You're not going to find it on your Epic Games launcher. Uh, you're not going to be able to go in and currently see version 5.4. The only way to get this is through the Epic Games GitHub repository. Uh, I also want to mention that all of the features that we're going to be taking a look at in this video are subject to change. Um, this is still a work in progress, which means once version 5.4 releases publicly on the uh, Epic Games launcher, these features may look a little different, or they may function differently, or they may not even be there at all. You know, it's not a guarantee. As the team tests things, they may find bugs that they have to pull the feature and wait for, you know, a future release. Or sometimes they release things and then it gets pulled entirely. So with that out of the way, let's dive into Unreal Engine version 5.4. Now, up on the screen, I've got a meta sound like you and I have done together a million times at this point. But one of the things that you'll probably notice right off the bat that is different is our analyzers over here on the right. So we do still have our traditional uh, meter, but if I hit play, you'll see that below that, we now have an oscilloscope view, a stereo field, and a frequency analyzer. So all of these, to kind of help give you more insight into what your individual audio assets are doing. Now, I was playing around inside of the editor preferences because honestly, I wanted to see if there were any preferences for these, but I ended up finding something a little different. So in inside the editor preferences with all settings, if we type in audio and scroll all the way to the bottom, there's now a tick box for show oscilloscope on audio pin mouse over. And if we tick this and we go back into our meta sound and I hit play, if we mouse over these audio cables, we can now see a real time oscilloscope of specifically our left channel. And we can do the same out of our right. And this is really cool because now, if for those of you who have long chains of audio and processes inside your MetaSound, you can actually kind of basically stick a pin in a certain audio cable and see what the audio is doing in real time at that particular spot. So say you have a wave player going into a bit crusher, you can see exactly what that wave player is sending the bit crusher and then from there, you can go on the opposite side of the bit crusher and see how the two oscilloscopes differ. But that's not the only tool that we have to analyze our audio. So the reason that I wanted to start with that music meta sound was because I actually created that music meta sound for this example. And I'm just using the third person template and I've got our music set up here and I do have an attenuation on it. And then I've got some ambience up here. Uh, it doesn't have any attenuation on it, so we're gonna hear that regardless of where it is. And I have some footsteps on our player. So we've got our ambience, got our footsteps, and if we come up here to this platform, you can hear that we also have that music. And so before, what we would need to do is we would actually need to come in here to our um, command console and we would need to set this to enabled and now you can actually see where those audio sources are coming from and it does kind of give you a little bit of uh, of detail 
you know, what the f current volume is. Uh, for example, with our MetaSound music, uh, you can see that the volume is changing depending on how far or close away we get. And as someone who is currently working on a project that was already mostly developed by the time I got my hands on it and already had some sounds in and had to make changes to them, doing this visualization was the only way I could really determine kind of what sounds were playing and what I needed to work with. But now I'm gonna go ahead and stop this. And if you saw the Unreal Fest video that was put out, I believe it was back in September of last year, they showed this off and it is the Audio Insights. Now you may remember me doing a video a little while back on a plugin that was made by a good friend of the channel and that was called Audio Metering Pro. And that did something very similar, but Epic has now added something like this directly into the engine to function out of the box. So this is our Audio Insight window and you can see there's there's quite a bit to it here. And so if I go ahead and hit play again on this, you'll see now it shows us a detailed list of the sources that are playing. And as I walk around, you can see that those footstep sources are getting added. And this really just kind of makes it super easy to see what all audio assets are playing at any given spot inside the level. Now I'm gonna shift F1 to get my mouse here. And we can also look at the different audio buses that I've created for this. So I've got one for our ambience, one for our music, and one for our sound effects. And I just have the footsteps on sound effects. And so you can see, as I move, that sound effects meter jumps up because it's only listening to the footsteps. And so over here on the right, this is our master, made, master meter, and this is what's going out to our speakers. Uh, below that, we have our oscilloscope again, and this also is based on the master. So for example, if I turn my left ear to that music and get my mouse control back. You can see on our meter, we've got the left side is a little bit louder because it's facing that music. And in our oscilloscope, you can see that the left side is a little more active as well. However, if you look down here at our meters, this is the meter that's coming from that bus. So it's not going to be affected by things like gameplay. So that's just kind of giving us the levels of those sources at the source. For example, with music, even though we are now completely outside of that attenuation radius, you can see that we do still have music volume playing. And so uh, we also have access to our log, our different submixes. So if you've created submixes for these, uh, you can certainly look at those as well. Uh, I'll be honest, virtual loops haven't quite figured out what exactly that is, um, but then we have our sources. Now currently, the mute and solos don't seem to be functioning. Um, and for example, I can toggle to mute our music. But you can hear that even though I'm up here now, we still have our music. So I'm not sure if there's just some functionality that still needs to be developed, or maybe, you know, since this is all brand new and I'm just learning about it as I go along, maybe I didn't do something right. Uh, both of those are entirely logical options. And so between the different meters that we had inside our MetaSound and our Audio Insight, we now have an amazing look inside what's happening throughout the entire game with our audio. Now this next feature that we're gonna take a look at um, is probably from an audio standpoint, 
one of the most requested audio features that I have ever seen on the Unreal Engine Discord, the forums in the Sound Effects Guide Discord. This new feature is something that I think we can all agree is super, super exciting. Now again, this is in the development build, so it's not guaranteed that this is going to be in the public 5.4 update. But with that being said, the development build can play MIDI files. So this is a feature that I know a lot of people have really been requesting for quite a while. Now at the end of uh, Unreal Engine version four and into 5.0, there was a plugin on the marketplace for a little while that would allow the import of MIDI files. Um, but, and please don't quote me on this, but I, I believe that towards the, um, the end of 5.0, that plugin kind of stopped getting updated and stopped getting supported. But now in 5.4, uh, at least the development build anyway, we now have the, the ability to import MIDI files. And so um, I've got this set up so that we've got our MIDI player. Uh, we're gonna be playing for Elise, the old classical piano tune. And I've got MIDI channel one and MIDI channel two that I'm filtering out because this particular MIDI file uh, is broken up into two channels. Channel one is the right hand, channel two is the left hand. You can set this to zero and it will pass through all MIDI channels. But for those of you who are familiar with working with MIDI, you do have up to 16 individual channels on a single MIDI stream. So setting that to zero will allow all of them through, but if you wanted to filter out by channel, you can certainly do that. And uh, I did notice, and maybe I didn't set this up correctly, because, you know, let's be honest, I'm learning about all of this on the go. Uh, but I did find an issue where the note off doesn't trigger this fast enough. Uh, I don't know if I set something up incorrectly or if it's just a performance issue that needs worked out in the engine. We can't point fingers because honestly, it, it very well could be me. Um, but let's just take a listen. Uh, this is all set up through sine waves, so it's not gonna sound like a piano, um, but we can at least watch it function. So yeah, it, it works. It played for release through MIDI and used it in a sine wave player and we heard it. So, and that was just a, a MIDI file. I didn't do anything to it. Um, I just downloaded it from the internet, threw it in here and it works. There are some other options here. Uh, I'm not gonna be going through any of the in this video. I will be putting out tutorials once 5.4. Uh, I'm probably going to wait until 5.4 preview one, um, even though preview one and possibly preview two still don't guarantee that it's going to be a feature. But usually once we make it that far, it's probably going to be. Um, so if you're looking for tutorials on this stuff, I'm not making them quite yet. This is just kind of an overview of the features that are in the development build. Now, if we're talking MIDI, we really, really, really need to put it through its paces. And uh, what better way to do that than by trying to get Unreal Engine to play Rush E.
Alright guys, so that is going to wrap things up for this video. Uh, I know it was a little short, um, but these were the features that stuck out to me in the 5.4 development build. I may make a follow-up video as I find more new features, but in all honesty, my knowledge on this stuff is I'm learning as I go. I get all of my information from just playing around with stuff. So there could be things that I didn't set up correctly, there could be things that I have missed. Um, and that's just the way it goes when you're learning new software. So let me know in the comments section below uh, what your favorite part was, what you're most excited for, or what you would love to see in Unreal Engine. Not that I have any control over that, but I do know that sometimes the developers watch my videos, and so maybe, just maybe, your idea could end up in a future update. So that's gonna wrap things up. If you guys would like to be a part of the Sound Effects Guide Discord server, you'll find a link in the description below. And uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell so you never miss out on any future content. Until next time.